Right, I'm sure by now you've all seen these. This is the injunction that Bedfordshire Police is trying to impose on our protest march in Luton on Saturday. Now, this is the most scandalous and outrageous abuse of police powers I have ever come across in all my years of politics. I have never seen something like this imposed on another political group in this country. This is a first in British political history. Now, Jada's going to go over some of the conditions that the police want to apply to us, but basically, the police have, at the very last moment possible, applied to the High Court for an injunction, which means that all of a sudden, while we're preparing for our protest, our legal protest, we now face a six grand plus legal bill, and we also face some crippling injunction conditions being placed on us right at the last minute. Now, in my opinion, the police did this right at the last minute because they was hoping and praying that we didn't have the money in order to defend ourselves in the high court, which is the highest court in the land. So they've done this purely out of spite and deliberate and blatant and bare-faced political bias against a political party. Meanwhile, Anjem Chowdhury and his gaggle of Islamic extremists and convicted terrorists is touring London as we speak with their Islamic roadshow spreading Sharia law, jihad and support for ISIS all around London. And he has not touched, he's not got any conditions, he's not being harassed by the police at all. We're organising a legal protest in a British town and the police have pounced on us. They've known about this for six weeks. They've pounced on us literally days before our protest in the high court, the highest court in the land, the most expensive court in the land, to try and cripple us on the eve of our protest. That's what they're trying to go for. Now, Jada, please just go through some of these con ridiculous conditions that the police are trying to impose on us. Yeah, they are ridiculous. And the other reason they've done it in the 11th hour is obviously so that if they get this, we can't appeal it in time um, for our protest on Saturday. So there are various conditions. There are five points to this injunction. Um, but there are two that are you know, particularly concerning. The first of which, so basically this injunction says it is to prohibit Paul Golding and Jada Franson for a period of one year and the following other conditions, one of which being uh, entering the town of Luton in Bedfordshire and its surrounding areas as indicated in the attached plan. Um, the plan basically covers the whole of Luton and the surrounding areas, meaning we can't even drive through. We can't go there. It's a British town. We're British, but we can't go there um, if they get this injunction. The other point that is really, really concerning that they have applied for is that myself and Paul Golding will be prohibited from publishing, distributing or displaying or causing to be published, distributed or displayed any words or images, whether electronically or otherwise, which having regard to all the circumstances are likely to stir up religious and or racial hatred or Islamophobia. Now, this we have sought legal advice on this particular clause because you will appreciate everything we do entails putting out words, images, whether it be on Facebook, Twitter, email, in our newspaper, in our letters, in our leaflets. This could actually bind us insofar as if ISIS themselves produce an image of them with a Christian captive they're about to behead and it's shared on many networks, most of the mainstream papers would publish that, if we share that image, myself and Paul will find ourselves in breach of this injunction and in contempt of court. So it really is serious. That doesn't just affect Luton, that affects our roles. Um, so just basically what they have to do, the police, to justify the last this. One? Well, the last one, which is, is evident, this is, this is what they apply for, I mean, this is what they're getting, is that a power of arrest be attached to all of the conditions. So obviously, with any injunction, if you breach the conditions, a power of arrest is attached to them. So if we were to breach any of those, so if we were to post something that they deemed to uh, you know, incite racial hatred or religious hatred or cause anyone distress. And who is it that determines what is Islamophobic? Well, this who is determines what's Islamophobic and who's not? Well, this is it is the it. police? Well, the police are actually, at the moment, 
you know, taking the whole of this matter into their own hands and they are being judge, jury, execution, execution of the lot, you know. Um, the courts have the final say, of course, but they've made that very clear that any image we produce or share would be deemed as breaching that clause. So it's evident, they've already laid the grounds. We can't even share images, it's just ludicrous. So in order for them to get this injunction, they have to back this up. And this, I mean, this is the details of claim. This are the grounds on which the police are applying for this injunction. Just listen to some of these points. The first point they're saying is an interview that I uh, gave to BBC Three Counties regarding our Luton Day of Action, which they, in which they said I made some highly provocative statements and caused harassment and distress to the Muslim community in Luton. Um, they also refer to a day when Paul and myself went to Luton. We drove through Berry Park. We were attacked by various Muslims, one of whom has been arrested uh, for attempting to assault Paul Golding. They're saying that because of that assault on us, that's grounds for us to have an injunction. Um, the other thing they're saying is that our march, and I quote, our march will also take place during the holy month of Ramadan. This is a Christian country and the police are stating that we cannot march because it's the holy month of Ramadan. It's absolutely outrageous. It's totally outrageous. So. Uh, basically, those are the terms of the injunction and those are the basically the, the, the grounds. A, a media interview, the fact that we were attacked. We were attacked. We were attacked, so we're not allowed in Luton. Yep. And it's the holy month of Ramadan. I mean, that's basically it in a nutshell. Mm. Um, so we need to talk now about why this is so serious. We need to explain what the consequences are um, and the predicament that the police have put us in deliberately just a day, one day before our protest in Luton. Now, quite frankly, if we don't hire a barrister, if we don't somehow raise the money to hire a barrister, then we will probably lose because Jane will be out of her depth, I'll be out of my depth. We're not equipped to be arguing uh, in, in the High Court in London. It's, it's not an option. Mm -hmm. If we don't get a barrister, then we're probably going to lose and the police will get these conditions. That will mean, first of all, we won't be able to come to Luton on Saturday, me and Jada, or we will basically be thrown in prison for contempt of the High Court, the highest court in the land. Secondly, this clause, publishing, distributing or displaying any words or images, electronic or otherwise, that are likely to stir up uh, Islamophobia or religious hatred, um, that's purely down to the discretion of the police. Now, if the police say, you've put up an image that criticises Anjem Chowdhury, bang, you're both in contempt of court, contempt of the High Court, you'll be arrested and you'll be thrown in prison. We've been told by solicitors and barristers at least six months. Mm. So, basically, if we don't raise the money, then we'll lose. Me and Jada will be in a position where we have to walk away from Britain first or go to prison. Yeah. We're, or, we're, we're in a position where we either stay away from Luton or we go to prison. And basically, if we lose this, then we could be looking at paying the police costs, the legal costs against us, which we've been told, what was it, a cons like conservative 30, estimate? Yeah, 30, well, 30,000 plus. I mean, they've, they're going to have a QC, they're going to have a full legal team. We're not talking about a small amount. They're using taxpayers' money, your money, to do this to us. So it's going to be a, a, a high, costly bill. So basically, in a nutshell, this is extreme and it's serious. And they've yeah. sprung, us on, uh, sprung this on us at the very last minute they possibly could. Unless we raise the £6,000 we need to get a barrister to fight our corner in court, basically we will be crippled as a movement. Me and Jada will either be in prison or we'll have to walk away from Britain first. And yeah. we, There's no way we will do that. So... If you're watching this, please, 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 the very survival of our movement that we have built up is on the line. If you're watching this on Facebook, there will be a, a donation link just above this video. If you're watching it from an email bulletin on the Britain First website, then there'll be a big red button saying donate under the video. Please, please, please chip in whatever you can to our fighting fund so that we can get a barrister and defeat this and come out victorious.